Check the description for the following discount codes. Now this product has been out for a little while, but I've only just got round to getting one in for review. Um, the C5 bundle from Camus. I did review their C15 wheelbase and wheel, must be over a year, maybe two years ago now. And that was, I think, perhaps the first thing they released to market, and it really wasn't very good. And in fact, the review unit I had actually went up in smoke a couple of months after I received it. So there was a lot left to be desired there. Now, the C5 that we have here is obviously a fair way in the future. You may or may not have seen reviews of this elsewhere, but it has a little five newton meter direct drive uh, motor built in to the wheel itself. These two prongs you see here just bolt on and they form part of the uh, desktop mount you can use with clamps if need be or bolt it directly to a sim rig. You may even be able to bolt these directly to a sim rig. I didn't actually try that. But yeah, the motor is integrated here. There is no quick release. The wheel doesn't come off separately. The wheel itself, they do say it's leather, I'm pretty sure. Leather material with hand stitching, the best gripping experience. The website is very much sort of Chinese translated to English, not the best, but does it smell of leather? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes it does. And it, it does feel, oh, it's hard to tell, but that's what it says anyway. Uh, it's 280 mil in diameter. So you're looking similar to say the Logitech G series of wheel bases and wheels in actual fact. And there's a fair array of buttons, 20 buttons, three rotational knobs. Here's your three knobs here and there's your 20 buttons. The buttons themselves have a nice, sort of confirmation click to them. They, they don't feel too, I so said they feel average to good from a button quality perspective. The rotaries, they've got a nice solid feel to them. Again, far from the best I've felt, but also far better than some of the, the worst ones I have felt. There is a little bit of play, sort of, you know, up, down, left and right in them, but they're, they're fine and they're decent um, for the price point. And that's a very interesting Thing to bring up here the price of this at the moment is 329 dollars of course this will vary depending on your currency where you are in the world there may be taxes import duties shipping but to keep it simple 329 dollars you can obviously check the work oh, there'll be a link actually in the description i'm i have got a discount code coming at the time of recording they haven't given it to me yet but it will be in the description hopefully when the video goes live but yeah follow the link check out the price for your country and whatever the shipping may be. But $329. So this is really aiming to sort of compete with things like the Logitech G923, which is about $300-ish, pardon me, depending on where you get it from. Um, the likes of the Moza R3 that hasn't actually sort of released anywhere. I think there's licensing issues with that from a console perspective. Um, and of course, power-wise, five newton meters, this actually competes with the Moza R5, so this is cheaper, and the Fnatic CSL DD without the boost kit. So there, that's where it's kind of priced in the market. So very much entry-level direct drive. Um, things like belt-driven Thrustmasters, again, this sort of price. I did mention this in a sort of um, in a video a few weeks weeks back, where I was comparing sort of entry level wheels and pedals and what you can get for your money. And this was mentioned in there. Maybe that's why Camus got in touch and said, would I like to review one? Could well be. On the back of the unit, you've got, well, this is a weird one. There's an input for a fan here and I'll show you that in a second. Let's see if we can get it in focus. And then there's a the USB input, the power input, the power button itself, and a couple of USB C's at the bottom, which is where the pedals and the shifter would go into is also a reset button and a power LED on there. Now I don't have the handbrake or a shifter, but I do have the pedals and we'll look at those in a second. But carrying on with the wheelbase and wheel itself, power supply that comes with it is rated to 6.3 amps or 120 watts to supply power for the five newton meters of torque. It feels well made. There's no sharp edges. The lines all match up. The cable feels a good quality, as does the two pin plug 
on the end and it does actually have little rubber feet that sit proud so if it is on a, a desk surface it will grip it won't slide around or perhaps a hard wooden floor it came with for me obviously a uk three pin plug and what we call a kettle lead over here again this feels nice quality doesn't feel cheap and nasty um, same goes for the usb cables we've got two one that goes from the pedals which is usb-c to usb-c they are camus branded you'll see that there uh, yeah so literally the pedals go usb-c into the back wheelbase also usb-c and then a usb b to a for the wheelbase itself into your pc and again these feel good quality um, i've certainly felt far cheaper than what we have here so no issues with that so far everything feels pretty decent uh, again for the for the price point we've got to bear that in mind throughout the entire video it's not all sunshine and rainbows though we'll get to some things that i don't like in a minute so out of those two prongs on the back i say you might be able to bolt that directly to a wheelbase if they happen to line up i didn't try but we do get this little sort of adapter and, and base as well so they slot into that hole there and that hole there and then they screw down from above now you may already have spotted this little fan in the middle there it sucks in and then it blows out like that towards the back of the wheelbase where the vents are now this is a very peculiar thing to have seen when i opened the box and discovered a little cooling fan in there i was like oh what else going on here but yeah so it's externally cooled now actually i suppose then if you were to bolt the wheelbase down using those two prongs and not this you wouldn't have the fan so that wouldn't be advisable it may well overheat obviously i tested it using this this and you need to assemble all this by the way it's, it's a lot it's like a lot of assembly that comes with this actually there's only really the wheel base that's assembled everything else you have to put together kind of yourself including this little cooling fan it's not hard the instructions uh, for both the wheelbase and the pedals and they're in chinese and in english and there is illustrations showing you exactly how to do it so it wasn't difficult it also comes with a little phillips screwdriver although this really is too small for the screws you're doing up a, you have to be very careful if you do use this it would be easy to either chew the end of the screwdriver or perhaps slip and damage the head of the screws you also get a couple of allen keys uh, for the respective size that you need and there is a usb c to usb a converter should you want to plug the pedals into your pc rather than into wheelbase don't know why you want to do that but you can maybe it's if you bought the pedals on their own perhaps so yeah that's that's how it will go together you've then got as i say the the desk clamp now i have two issues with this desk clamp the first is by its very design you can just keep screwing this up and screwing it up imagine you've got a desk in there and all it's going to do is bend this bottom piece further and further and further and further away so you can't do it up proper tight it doesn't ever get to the point where it feels like it's done up it would just keep bending obviously i was aware of this as soon as i see it so i didn't go beyond that i didn't want to distort it but it does do up tight enough to secure the steering wheel to a desk you'll see some footage of that in a little while when i talk about what it's like to drive with so they do work but they're not very good and keeping along the theme of these not being very good you may notice that this piece is missing from this one it's not because it wasn't here it's very much here but it is held in by a little screw that you can see there and that screw is done up with this phillips screwdriver before you put this little foam pad on the issue with that is it does up clockwise like most screws so when you then undo your clamp there's a very good chance this will unscrew itself from the little foot because the little foot is obviously clamped up as tight as you can against the underside of your desk preventing it from turning and so what happens this unscrews from that and the issue i now have is i can't get my screwdriver to the head of the screw to do it up it's an easy resolution i can just simply force my screwdriver through until i find the head of the screw but i would have done it up tighter in the first place if the screwdriver was the correct fitment for the screw if you don't know you can't just grab any phillips screwdriver or flathead screwdriver and use it with any phillips or flathead screw you have to choose 
in this case Phillips, one that fits snugly in the head of the screw. So there isn't any play, there's no opportunity to slip and chew it or damage it. So this is too small for the job, resulting in me not being able to do that up very tight. So what I would do to cure this, obviously, is I would just put a proper size screwdriver through the foam in the middle, because the middle piece of foam doesn't actually touch the desk anyway, this is concave, uh, or I'll peel it off and nip it up with a bigger screwdriver. But for review purposes, you use everything that's sent to you because that is the retail experience and that's what you lot want to know about. So that's a bit pony. The clamps themselves are a bit pony, but they do work. The wheelbase did not move in use, so they function, even if they're not the best thought out. Now, speaking of not the best thought out, the other thing I really didn't like was when it came to the pedals. Now, the, the, so the fit and finish on these pedals is very, very basic look. There's no grip on the pedal faces themselves. You have to put these on, They're, they come detached, and the pedals themselves are detached from the base plate. Now, I'm sure you can all tell just by looking at this, these are not going to be very heavy pedals, there's not going to be a lot of resistance to them, and there absolutely isn't. And you may notice from the angle of them, they're very much designed for floor use, like when you're seated at a desk, because these push down rather than kind of back, which is how a lot of pedals would be. So, and that's important because when you do use them, in fact, I'll put the footage of me using these up now. It wasn't easy to get because they're so small, my feet kind of covered them, but you'll see in the footage here, on carpet, you need pedals that kind of push down toward the floor. If they pushed away from you, the pedals would slide along the carpet. And that, of course, is no use to nobody. These did move around a little bit because I kept trying to use them like normal pedals and realizing, oh, come on, Carl, you need to make sure you depress these sort of down in a flat motion and that way they stay in the right place. Once I did that, I got used to them. They were fine. They both have equal pressure. They're both just, you know, just got a spring round wound around the bottom in there, the same for that one. So they feel the same, but they do, they are hall sensors, I might add, though. They're not potentiometers. And you actually get to see the little magnets because these pedals aren't attached. There's an arm that protrudes out the side here and you slot it into place with this little magnet on the end. So they are hall effect sensors, which is nice. And everything is all metal, which is nice from a longevity point of view. But um, they're very basic. They work, but they're basic. But again, the price point, they're cheap. We can't really complain too much. But what I can complain about is the use of M3 screws to secure them. Same on the faces here. Not such an issue on the face, but on the pedals themselves, if you're using an M3 screw, which I'll try and show you one of, these are absolutely tiny. They will not take barely any torque before they would thread out or potentially chew the head, you know, or maybe even the Allen key, because they are tiny. Now, you may have noticed in that close up, they do have some blue thread lock on them to stop them coming undone. That's a nice little touch and good to see. But I don't see any reason why they couldn't have just used M6 or M4. M3 is very, very small. Uh, I mean, you're not going to be putting the forces on these because it's just those two that hold them in. You're not going to be putting that much force on these, so you shouldn't rip them out, which was my concern. Um, you know, you are pushing downward rather than away, as I mentioned a minute ago. But yeah, that, that's something I thought, well, you don't really need to do that. You could have used M4, M5, M6, just something a little bit beefier. Because um, people might be hammering on them, you never know. Especially if you bolt them to a sim rig, which you can do. There is four holes, one in each corner that you could bolt it down to a rig, which of course is a preferred way to race if you can. Um, other things we have on here is just the USB-C at the back there, which goes either to your PC or to the wheelbase, like I did. And there seems to be an RJ12 plug on there. I don't actually know what that's for. I'm curious whether it tells me in the manual, because obviously I didn't use it. I just It just came with a USB-C cable. Type-C, Matt. Uh, they describe it. <laughs> Again, here's an example of our sort of Chinese type uh, manuals and, and quality control here. It is a CAN interface, but if we look 
at the actual diagram here. CAN interface is the LED and working LED is the RJ12 socket on the back there. So QC didn't pick up on that little error. But that's what is a CAN interface. I don't know what we'd use that for, but um, that's what it is. So yeah, they, they, like I say, they function fine. I thought my feet might slip on these because there's no grip, but they don't, they were fine. Again, I think it's perhaps because you're sort of pushing them down rather than pushing them away from you. So they function, they're very, very basic. And out of the whole package, it's my least favorite um, item. But again, cheap. Now, driving experience. Just get some footage of me up using this set now you'll see there's no real um well there's not any movement of the wheelbase itself where that table clamp is in use uh, in spite of the fact that you can't do it up as tight as i would like and the driving experience as a whole really really impressed me it is as smooth and as detailed and has the same strength as the other to sort of five newton meter direct drive wheelbases, the Moser R5 and the Fnatic CSL DD. I was actually very, very surprised considering, you know, the few sort of things that let it down. I'm get, I was getting that feeling of, oh no, here we go. It's not gonna be great, but I was wrong. This is a really nice wheel to use. Oh, I didn't show you the paddles. I'll show you those after you see this footage. The paddles are fully laughable, but they do function because it's what I'm using here in the video because I don't have a shifter. But yes, yeah, so the, the force feedback is smooth. It's detailed. You feel your rumble strips when you go over them. You get a nice jolt if you, know, if you make contact with a car or if you go off the tarmac onto the grass. The, there's enough sort of detail to pick up the undulations and as, as sort of the vehicle weight shifts from one direction to another, you can pick up on that. If you, if you lose the back end, it reacts and, and gives you that feedback in time to react yourself and counter steer and save it. And even with only five newton meters of torque, I mean, in a, in a bolted to a desk application, that's more than enough anyway. I mean, my desk wasn't moving around. I, I, I haven't watched the footage yet, but I don't remember it moving around. So we'll see here, um, my desk isn't like some thousand pound desk. It was 60 quid off of Amazon. Um, so there is a bit of movement in my desk, but I actually really enjoyed, I had a smile on my face the whole time I was using it because it was, I didn't expect it to perform as well as it does. No, of course it isn't anything like an Acer Tech Invicta wheelbase. You can't chop and change wheels. They're not interchangeable. You know, there is a, an element of sort of Chinese quality here and there, but the overall experience is really good. And I would choose this over a Logitech or a Thrustmaster belt-driven option, or even the old Fnatic belt-driven options, any day of the week. I wouldn't use it with these pedals, I might add, I would have a different set of pedals, but the wheel base and the wheel itself, I actually was really impressed with and really enjoyed using. It would be nice if it was a full circle rather than a D, because for people who want to rally and drift, having a circular wheel, you know, when you, when you can't change the wheel and this wheel has to do everything, then it would be nice for it to have been a circle, like the Logitech offerings, for example. But yes, I didn't, I didn't show you the paddles. Look, look at these. They are the smallest little things you have ever seen. That, they are literally the paddles. There's nothing to bolt onto them. That's, that's it. They're plastic and they're tiny, but they do sit where they need to sit. So you can use single fingers, you can use two fingers, you could use three fingers, but you wouldn't. Um, and I had absolutely no trouble using them, despite of the fact they are by far the worst paddles I've ever seen on any sim racing wheel. It's, I, I sort of got it out of the box and looked at it and thought, oh, there must be something that sort of clips on or bolts on. And I'm like, there's not really any room. And, I'm, and I sort of felt them like this. I'm like, and they're in the right place as if you were to use them like this. And lo and behold, that is what you do. So they may look a little bit silly, um, but they do work. <laughs> Again, the price point, $329. I guess we can't really complain can we but yeah i just there's something really novel about having your 
your motor in the back of your steering wheel as well. So I don't know, I've kind of got like a little bit of a sweet spot for this, you know, it's like, oh, it's trying, you know, and it performs well and it feels decent, the force feedback, and now oh, look at those cute little paddles on the back there, um, but also in a laughable kind of way. So yeah, I mean, aside from things like, you know, this, this issue here with the desk clamp, and if you're bolting it to a rig, that's not gonna be a problem anyway, and it can be resolved by using a bigger screwdriver, or the correct size screwdriver. The, um, the peculiarity of an external fan, uh, but again, it works, didn't have it overheat, and it's a tidy enough solution. You know, when it was bolted to it, this just goes in the back of the wheelbase, there's no issue there, really. Uh, again, the, the thing that lets it down the most, really, is the pedals, but it, they don't let it down for the price point, because at this price point, other offering the T3PAs or whatever they, 3PMs, whatever they are from Thrustmaster, plastic, uh, we've seen those wear and fall to bits. Um, this is at least all metal with Hall effect sensors. There's no potentiometers like you would find in the Logitech pedals, although correctly spec potentiometers do last years without issue. Um, Logitech ones are you know, evidence of that themselves. But uh, yeah, I mean, you bolt these to a rig and you bolt this to a rig, or maybe even a play seat challenge. It's the sort of price point someone might be at, play seat challenge, perhaps a GZ Amiga Art. Then for an entry level direct drive wheel, I, I can't not recommend it for the price point. As I say, I will have a discount link in the description, hopefully by the time this video goes live. If not, come back in a couple of days and it should definitely be there. They, the last communication I had was, what would you like your link to be? As in like, you know, what, what do I want to call the discount code? So it doesn't matter. Just give me the discount code, it's not important. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. I was pleasantly surprised and I have a I have a soft spot, sorry, not a sweet spot for this for this little wheelbase. I just like it because it's different, the thought outside the box and the whole package, like the pedals when you're using them, you soon forget that they're a bit cheap and cheerful, you know, and you get a little bit of muscle memory for them and you're in there and you're enjoying yourself and you're and I'm too busy smiling about how novel an experience it is for that little money to have quite smooth, accurate and detailed force feedback and with a reasonable amount of strength as well. So yeah, I, I think you can't really go wrong. Obviously this is PC only um, and whether they continue to improve with firmware updates and whatnot, who knows, only time will tell. But I think at the moment it's it gets the thumbs up for the price point. So if this is the kind of thing you're looking for and it is you know within your budget and it's what you want, then by all means, click through, have a look in your relevant country through the link and see what the price is, including shipping and discounts or whatever, because it will vary from country to country. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope some of you have found this useful. And as always, take it easy.